Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today is a beautiful, hot, humid, but beautiful Saturday here in Baltimore and I made a trip down south to Davidsonville, Maryland and Bowie, Maryland and I bought plants. I have a great plant haul today. Come with me and let's see what I brought home from the nurseries. Well, it's no secret that I've bought a lot of plants this year because of the backyard renovation that we did this spring. So um, this trunk load of plants is the fun stuff. This is just walk around the nursery and see what jumps into your cart and bring it home and find a place for it. Up until now, okay, yes, I always do a little bit of that kind of shopping, but um, really this year, more than usual, I've had a list of things that I was looking for and I would go to the nursery and I would look for those things and if they were there, I'd bring them home and if they weren't there, I would be disappointed and I would just have to wait. But now that I've got all of the major shrubs and the major trees and some of the perennials that were on my wish list, those have been purchased, they have been planted the backbone of the new backyard is in place. Now I'm to back to the place where I normally am in my gardening season, which is what do I want to add to my garden? What plants are calling out to me now and what wants to come home with me? So I have several different kinds of plants here for several different areas in the garden and I'm excited to share them with you. So let's just get to it. The first thing I want to share with you are these Mexican petunias. Now, they don't look like much yet, but I was introduced to these when we lived in Raleigh, North Carolina. These are really popular down there and further south. Um, and I really haven't seen them too much in Maryland, but we are zone seven, Raleigh's zone seven. They're of course 7B, we're 7A-ish. Um, so Mexican petunias um, down there, they're kind of almost perennial if you have an easy winter. Here, I don't anticipate that these will be perennial, but the great thing about Mexican petunias is that they grow fast. They love, love, love hot and humid weather. In fact, the more humid, the better. And if you don't have hot weather, they really don't perform. So that's perfect for a summer situation like we have here where the summer high in July and early August is easily in the mid to upper 90s with humidity that takes you well over 100. And so I have three of these and uh, did I say these are Mexican petunias? Yeah, and it turns out I didn't get any that are blooming right now But what they do is at the tips up here. Here's some buds um, they put on uh, purple petunia looking flowers and so they don't act like a regular like Vista petunia um, as far as their habit or their leaves or anything like that, but um, their flowers are very reminiscent of what we know as petunias, regular petunias. So these three are going to go out on the front corner of our garden at the corner of the street out where it's pretty neglected and you have to be able to withstand neglect out there in order to survive. So these are going to go out there. Um, they're smallish now. They're, I'd say they're about 18 inches tall right now, but I think they're going to get nice and big and tall. So I'm going to find a great spot for them out on the front corner. What should we talk about next? Okay, so I just watched a video by um, Guiding Green Thumbs, and I will link that video down here. And she was talking all about echinacea and the different styles of echinacea, and she has so many in her garden, it's so beautiful. And um, I really don't have very much echinacea in my yard. I have the uh, purpurea, just the native, uh, very standard echinacea purpurea. And I think I have one powwow, berry is that a thing wild berry I'm not sure I have one other kind out front but I don't really have a whole lot of different styles of echinacea so I wanted to rectify that so I brought home uh, let's see this is a powwow white this is a raspberry truffle here is a ruby star Kismet Raspberry. I thought I had more. Yes, they're up front. 
another powwow white. So I have two powwow whites and one of each of the other colors. Each of these has a different growth height. Uh, the Kismet Raspberry will get to be about 16 to 18 inches tall. Ruby Star, 18 to 24 inches tall. Raspberry Truffle, uh, 22 to 32 inches tall. So this will be a nice tall one. And then the powwow whites, oh, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> There we go, powwow white, just under two feet tall. So, okay, so I mentioned earlier that I went to two different nurseries and the first one I went to was Homestead Gardens in Davidsonville, Maryland. <clears throat> and the second one I went to was Patuxent Nursery in Bowie, Maryland. Now, Homestead, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's huge, it has a huge interior space, selling lots of furniture, gift items, decorative items for your garden and home and lots of tools and lots of equipment and it's just a huge enormous wonderful garden center however their plants are priced quite a bit higher than Patuxent Nursery or Sun Nursery or Frank's Nursery which are in Valley View which are the places that I've taken you before so these two powwows they look really similar don't they in fact this one has five buds on it and this one has one two three four buds on it they're the same size pot, they're the same height plant, and they look to be about the same health. This one from Homestead Gardens cost $12.99, and this one cost $10.99. So uh, this one is just $2 more expensive than this one. So there's that. And then the other ones that I got, like this uh, raspberry truffle, got it at Homestead for $22.99. Um, the Ruby Star, I got it at um, Homestead for $12.99. So I guess depending on the rarity or the specialness of the variety, that's what determines the pricing point, I guess. But um, just, you know, something that I was made aware of as I was shopping today. Um, the different nurseries have different price points. All right, let's see. What else? Let's talk about these. These are Agastache, or some people say Agastache. These are Hummingbird Mint. This is a dwarf one. It's called Poquito Lavender. And it's got these beautiful lavender flower spikes on it. It draws hummingbirds and butterflies and bees. And I have to say that when I was at the nursery, oops, and I was selecting the, which pots I was going to grab, um, I had to actually shake the plants and get the bees off. And when I took it out to the car, I had to verify that there were no bees on the plants. They were absolutely covered. Each of these plants had five, seven, eight bees on it. And so I know that the um, pollinators are gonna love this. I'm gonna put this out in the front garden on the side where I have my vegetables and the um, incredible hydrangea and those kinds of things. Cause I don't have many perennials in there yet and I would like to start building up a perennial border there. So that's where these are going. But look, here's another powwow white that I got at um, Patuxent. So I have three powwow whites and then three singles of other colors. Okay, so, um, so that takes care of the front corner and a little bit of the front yard by the incredible hydrangea. Now I'm turning my attention to a different project that I have in mind. Well, first of all, this is an Elegans Hosta. This is a beautiful blue one. This one gets to be, I think, five feet around. Um, when it's mature, height of 30 inches and five feet um, spacing. So this is another um, inspiration from Guiding Green Thumbs video from a couple of weeks ago where she was going over her hosta garden, her shade garden, and she had this beautiful, huge blue um, hosta and I asked her what it was and she said it was Elegans. And so that's what this is and I'm going to find a space for this in my north side garden where I have lots of other hostas. This one's going in there too. Okay, so the next thing I have is for a project on my picnic table, my round table with the umbrella on it. I have a planter on that table that is two half circles and it, uh, you plant them up as if it's one 
donut shaped planter and then you set them around your umbrella pole. Well, what I had put in there before was bacopa and alyssum, but I'm not good enough about watering them and so they both dried up and that planting is done for. So now I have a plan to put in sedums because sedums don't require as much water as bacopa or alyssum. So let me share. First of all, you know, you may remember that I already have a lemon coral sedum that I um, haven't planted anywhere yet. Why is my foot hurting so much? That I haven't planted anywhere yet. So I'm going to use the lemon coral sedum, but also I'm going to plant it with this one, which is Vian Stefaner gold stone crop. Vian Stefaner, that's a German word. So this one is just a nice green. It's got a pretty little leaf shape. It's got like um, serrated edges on the leaf corals. And I think it's just a nice, pretty, beautiful, nice green sedum. So that's one. That'll look really nice with the lemon coral. And then I'm also going to plant it with this one, which is a blue spruce sedum. Um, and this one does look very much like a blue spruce leaf, doesn't it? Um, so I think this is gonna look nice. It's a slightly different texture and color from this one. And then putting a lemon coral with that will look really nice. Finally, the fourth and final plant for that will be this one, which is Full de Glut, Full de Glut Stone Crop. And it's a reddish green one that's more trailing. And uh, so it'll bring just another different color to the planting. So there'll be four different sedums in those uh, planters. And I'm hoping that that will be more successful as a summer um, planting around the umbrella pole on the picnic table. Now, I want to do an annual planting. I haven't really done very much annuals in containers, but I, I want to put one on my side porch. So I picked up three plants for an annual planting. And so one of them is this uh, begonia. It's kind of flopping already, which means that it'll be kind of nice for over the edge of a planter. Uh, and I got some more Creeping Jenny, and that will go in the planter with it. And this uh, Lamium Jade Frost. And this is a creeper as well. I just dropped some. So I think that these three plants together will make a nice container. And I'll be putting that on the side porch. When I was looking for the begonia, there really weren't very many nice looking begonias left. It's kind of late in the season to be buying annuals. So this is the best one I could find. And I'm just hoping that I'll be able to plant it up in such a way that the pretty part is what we see and the not so pretty part is hidden by these other plants. Okay, I got three of these um, Japanese Hakonicloa. Uh, some people call it Hakoni grass. This is the Oriola variety. It is a beautiful goldish, yellowish uh, variegation with green stripes. I got three of them. They're pretty slow growing in my garden. Um, I'm planning to put two of them together in one spot in the backside yard. Um, I do already have one clump of this same variety that's about, I mean, if I had put all three of these plants together, that's about the size of the clump that I already have. But I'm, I'm gonna plant two of these together to start another clump a little bit further down in the border so that I have some repetition of that. But then this third one I have in mind for something else. Okay, so, the last thing that I bought the rest of these plants for is a really fun project that I want to share with you. I'm very excited to get this one underway. Awesome. Okay, imagine if you will that I have these two hollies. These are Steed's hollies, Japanese hollies. They are currently about two, three feet tall each. They're in a five gallon container, each of them. And these are plants that are evergreen. They don't get boxwood blight, but they look a lot like boxwoods. And these are gonna go in the planter, the big long planter that we have on our north side garden fence. The one that I've been talking about forever. The one that I just put a video up about how I finally turned it into a self-watering container and put soil into waiting for plants. Well, it's been sitting there waiting for plants for quite some time now. And so finally I bought plants for it. So I'm gonna put two of these Steed's Hollies 
in that planter. These will grow to be, if they were in perfect conditions, they would grow to be eight feet tall and four feet wide each. But because they're gonna be in a container and because they're gonna be in pretty good shade, it's not exactly dark, dank shade. They will get some dappled sun throughout the day. So I'm calling it kind of a very part shade environment. So these plants prefer sun to part shade. I'm not giving them very much sun, but I am giving them some. Um, so I don't think they're gonna get fully eight feet tall or fully four feet wide, and they can be pruned and shaped um, to stay within a boundary of space that I want. But I'm gonna be putting them into the container. The container is six feet long, and so I'm gonna be putting them in kind of centered, one on either side. Um, so there'll be these two, and they'll eventually grow to be together. Um, and then in front of it, in the container, I bought some things to go with. So first of all, I got um, these two ferns. Now these are called tassel ferns. And what I like about the tassel fern in particular compared to the other fern varieties that were available is that this one is evergreen. It won't drop its leaves in the winter, at least that's what I think based on the tag information. So these will grow to be, um, oh, well they say they grow two to three feet tall and uh, two feet wide. So again, I don't know if they'll do that in a container situation. They might or they might not. But I got two of these and I'm envisioning these on the outside of the, um, of the hollies. And then I also got two of these little blue cadet hostas, two of them. And these are little bluish, bluish green hostas and they grow to be 12 to 16 inches tall and 18 inches wide. So these will be a nice little hosta. Two of those, and we'll arrange them in there somehow nicely. And then I got three of these uh, berry smoothie heucheras. And these are gorgeous. I love the fact that they are purplish pink, but also have green in them. And I think that brings a little bit of beautiful color to this container. And this one gets to be 18 inches tall, spreading to 20 inches, and I have three of them. So I'm envisioning that we'll want to be on the outside and one in between and one on this side. And then these will be nearby and these will be nearby. And then finally, the last piece of the puzzle is I got three of these polka dot plants and these are the Proven Winners Hippo Pink um, plants. These are annuals, uh, but they bring in the pink. So I think with this and this, and this fern, and this hosta, and that one other Hikonicloa um, is gonna go maybe into this container as well. So that is a big planting project that I have coming up and we'll see how much space is left over. There might be room for some more annuals, there might not be. I looked for caladiums and I didn't see any uh, by the time I got to the second garden center. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's getting ready to rain. We're gonna have thunderstorms moving through this afternoon. So none of these are gonna get planted today. I'm just gonna set them over in my little nursery over by the garage door. I'll water them um, and make sure that they're stable for any wind that we get from the thunderstorm. And then they'll get planted over the course of the coming week. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed what you saw and I hope I'll see you again in another video really soon. Thanks guys. Take care, bye-bye. Oops.